the trucker convoy drama. Okay, what's happening? In Canada right now, there are a bunch of, of largely right-wing, mostly owner-operator truckers um, who are in protest to Canada's uh, vaccine and mask mandate laws are going and parking their trucks in the middle of the road, honking, being annoying, holding up signs, you know, protesting. They're doing protester shit. Okay. And, uh, in response, so there's a couple of things that have been happening, which is first off, the cops are very, very, seem to be the Canadian police, uh, seem to be very motivated to actually participate in and be lenient towards these protests, which is painful for Canada. Because as it turns out, if you park a bunch of 18 wheelers in the middle of the road, no one else can use that road. And if you happen to park them in an important road, well, then nobody can use the important road. Okay? So that's the trucker convoy. Okay? Now, uh, it's pretty easy to denounce the trucker convoy. Yes? Um, the trucker convoy is, uh, an, a, a, it is largely anti-union. It is a bunch of owner-operator truckers, a.k.a. truckers who are not a part of any truckers' unions. They're not a part of Teamsters. They're not a part of anything like that. Super easy to condemn. A lot of the most influential figures are uh, far-right nationalist weirdos. Um, some of them are literally conspiracy theorists. Some of them are, are openly anti-Semitic. Um, the trucker convoy is turbo cringe. It's full of fucking terrible people, okay? And... What they hope to accomplish is also rather repugnant. Uh, they want to prevent mask mandates and vaccine mandates with save that will save lives. Arguably, they also many of them are like actual fascists, so they probably want to like they've got a lot of things um, that they want uh, to put into power that would be terrible. Um, and uh, um, and uh, one of their demand, some of their, yeah, but okay, but none of okay, but saying their demands is 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 a bit of is a little bit of a weasel word because uh like many protest movements it is not particularly organized okay it's a lot of different people involved there are a lot of different people okay now all of that said canada has had a problem dealing with certain aspects of the trucker convoy and this is because the police have not been effective or cooperative in many cases in going and clearing out uh, when the protest is determined to be uh, no longer a protest and, and must be cleared out because other people need to use the road or whatever. Um, and so because of this difficulty, pr uh, the, the, uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, has decided to invoke a a a relatively self-explanatory act called the Emergency Powers Act, okay? And this is where things get a little sussy wussy, okay? Um almost like mandates hurt capital or something. Mm, yes, yes, they do. But we're not going to get into that right away. We'll talk about this. Um things have gotten a little sussy wussy, okay? And in the online left spaces um things have gotten frustrating actually genuinely frustrating okay um and the reason for this in my opinion my little theory is because this particular issue touches on the ultimate weak point for liberals and canadians being dyed in the wool liberals are getting hit directly in their weak point and I'm going to explain what I mean by this. So a lot of people see this right-wing protest movement and they go, wow, damn, these motherfuckers suck. I don't give a shit what happens to them, which frankly, by and large, is a totally acceptable position most of the time. I don't give a fucking shit what stupid asshole uh, Republicans uh, stupid asshole hyper-Nazi conservative bastards. I don't give a shit what things happen to them. However, that has limits, you know, like that has 
some limits, okay? That has some very serious limits. It especially has limits when, uh, uh, when the entity that is is doing the ba doing a bad thing to those protesters is doing it in a way that could also hurt lots and lots of other people. And it's even worse if it has already been used to hurt lots and lots of other people. Now, what is the actual action that is going to be taken? You might be going, oh my God, this sounds very, very uh, serious. What are they planning? And you might be surprised to find out that no, they're not planning on like firebombing the convoy or anything like that. However, what Trudeau wants to do, and I want you to listen carefully, is use the Emergency Powers Act to freeze the bank accounts and financial assets of a bunch of people without due process. Hmm. Hmm. And once again, things get very sussy. Now, I look at that and I go, guys, that's really bad. That's really, really bad. And let me explain why it's bad, okay? And why I think it's a bad thing. And then I'm going to deal with the arguments that, have, that I've seen. We're going to look at some of the reactions I've seen. We're going to look at some of the memes. And I'm likely going to get very angry at Canadians because inevitably... After I explain this, many of the Canadian liberals in chat are simply not going to listen to a single word that I said and continue to make the same stupid arguments, and you will all get to have your fun, okay? Um, but let's explain this. Um, it's bad, yeah, but if the cops aren't going to do their jobs to process that group, then how do you handle that besides calling in a National Guard-type group? We will answer that question. I will answer that question as this goes on. Hold on. Let me get my little questions area set up here. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. What is due process? Okay. Due process refers to um, a, 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 a essentially the right to a fair trial. Okay. Due process is a fundamental aspect of what we understand to be democracy or even a remotely free society. Now, I would say, uh, being, you know, based lib left type, I would say it's all the, the, the idea of your civil rights have always been an illusion. Um, and while they might, while certain civil rights legislation might save your butt in certain circumstances, it turns out the state often just ignores those laws anyway. However, due process is fundamentally necessary to the legitimacy of a demo of a democracy or of a free society okay and i want you to think about this what is the difference what is one of the core differences between a kingdom and a democracy well in a kingdom the king can do whatever the fuck he wants and basically no one except for another king or a baron with a big enough army can say anything about it or if you want to say something about it, well, then you have the French Revolution and the guillotines come out, right? Or maybe the church. Let's not let's not be too ridiculous, okay? And in a democracy, there isn't a king to fuck you up. There might be a president, but that president usually is not given the power. He doesn't have the ability to to fuck you up if he doesn't like you outside of, you know, saying something horrible about you on a giant thing. He doesn't have direct, explicit power to fuck you up. Nor does any senator or individual judge. The point is that there are a there is a constitution, a set of rights that you are always guaranteed no matter what. That is a fundamental part of a democracy and arguably... For those who are fans of, of democracy as a, as a way, a fundamental part of a free society. Having guaranteed rights that everyone gets, even bad people, is the only way that you can even have the, 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 you can even have the presumption of a fair society. If you are willing to bend those rules, well then, those rules may as well not exist. 
because they're just not true. Okay? Now you're starting to see why due process is so important. Okay? Um, due process refers to your right to a fair trial, your right to a lawyer, your right to, to um, not be imprisoned uh, before you've been charged of a crime, your right to demand evidence. That is due process. It is saying, yes, we will accept. Now, I don't, I don't, I have my own disagreements with this, but let's put our liberal hats on for just a minute. Due process is what allows you to say, yes, we can arrest you, but we have to have a reason for it. And if you, we don't have evidence for it, we can't hold you in a prison cell because we have to evidence why you're being arrested. Okay? So, while many Canadians and many liberals are going, well, why do you care about the bank accounts of Nazis? Why do you give a shit about the bank accounts of Nazis? This is the reason why. I don't really give a shit about their bank accounts. What I give a shit about is the fact that the president is bypassing the constitutional rights provided to people to punish them with no need to provide evidence, with no need to do a fair trial, with no need to provide witnesses, with no need to even sh prove that anybody has done anything wrong in the first place. Ooh, that gets a little scary. Hey, let me let me let me pitch you real quick. Let me just pitch you um a uh, a little, you know, a little thing. Imagine that you are a popular political streamer, right? Okay? Maybe you're like Hassan sized. Let's pr let's keep it relevant. Imagine you're a popular political streamer and you make a very public, very popular uh critique of the current president. Let's say it's Donald Trump. Let's pretend that Donald Trump wins again in 2024. And Hassan says, fuck you, Donald Trump. I think you're a piece of shit. And it just so happens that a very nasty protest occurs. Yes? Let's say, ooh, ooh. Let's say that protest is, let's say it's a BLM protest that goes real bad. Maybe one faction of the BLM protest gets real bad, okay? And Hassan had said, ah, I support BLM in the past. And then Donald Trump decides to suspend due process. And he says, all right, FBI, CIA, get me a list and arrest these individuals. Okay? And he says, and you know what? Arrest that Hassan guy too. He's been involved with these protests. And they go, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he goes, and you know what? Arrest this other guy. He's been, he's been favorable to that. And then somebody goes, hey, wait, 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 whoa, whoa. Where'd Hassan go? Where'd Hassan go? And then the answer is, fuck you. You don't get to know because they didn't collect evidence. There was never a court case. Hassan just disappeared one day. Little bit sussy, isn't it? That one guy... Or one guy and a couple of agency heads can essentially make a hit list behind closed doors and just delete those people's bank accounts or, in worst cases, imprison them. Isn't that kind of fucked up? Isn't that really fucked up, actually? Well, the answer is yes. It's extremely fucked up. Okay? Now, here in America... We are very used to this sort of thing. Here in America, we don't have any civil liberties. We don't even have the illusion of civil, civil liberties, especially since 9-11. When 9-11 happened, and by the way, just so you know, it really is that drastic. When 9-11 happened, we turned into a surveillance state, like a, a full, just open surveillance state. We no longer have the right to privacy in the United States. Um, the only hope that you have of privacy is preventative measures, aka hard encryption, okay? If, and even then, that's not a guarantee because many corporations provide back doors for the government. So even if you have encryption, the government can still get into your stuff at any time, whenever they want, for whatever reason they want. You said something beneficial. Uh, you said something favorable about Antifa. Well, guess what? Donald Trump and the Republican Senate and legislature 
uh, just passed a law that says Antifa is a terrorist group, and you said you said on Twitter once that you supported Antifa, and you also happen to, you know, I don't know, be influential in some way. Well, you're a terrorist, and you, therefore, can be surveilled. You can have your, your texts looked through. Pretty bad. Yeah, maybe you'd end up in Gitmo, like all those people who, who never had a fair trial, who were tortured for years. Did we all forget this? Have all of you fucking liberals forgotten this? Sorry, I'm getting too angry too early. Hold on. Keep it easy. Keep it easy. Okay. You're starting to see why this is a bad situation. Okay? Now... You've, now, I've explained why I don't give a shit about the actual protesters or the truckers or anything, but why I think that this is not a thing that should be done. Now, some people go, well, it's a part of the Emergency Powers Act, everybody. It's only for emergencies. It's so that you can handle the emergency. But there's a problem with that, which is that what determines an emergency? How do you draw the line for what is an emergency? And this is where... I get to tell you a very interesting story. It's not a story the Canadians would tell you. Okay? It's not. I do a terrible Palpatine impersonation. <laughs> I, I realized that I got stuck somewhere between like a, like a, like a Qui-Gon. Yeah, let me tell you a story, okay? This is a fun one. And guess what? It's gonna be a Canadian story. The Canadian Parliament is proud to present to you the Emergency Powers Act. A brilliant reform of the formerly existing legislation known as the War Powers Act. Now you might go, reform? Oh, soy! Soy! I love reforms! I love reforms! Now, it's, it's really funny because lots of Canadians will tell you, Oh, the Emergency Powers Act has never been used before. What do you mean this is a bad precedent? Soy! And the answer is, that's true because the Emergency Power Act was only recently fucking created and it directly replaced the War Powers Act. And let me tell you, uh, let me tell you, the War Powers Act is a very, very sussy little act. Sorry, uh, sorry, did I say war measures? My mistake, Miss, I misspoke. The War Measures Act, very sorry. Small miss, miss, uh, we can correct that, okay? It's the War Measures Act. I'm very sorry. Um, okay? Now, I, I, have y'all ever heard of Japanese internment? Y'all ever heard of that? Y'all ever heard of uh, this time in history where a bunch of North American nations put a bunch of innocent Japanese citizens into concentration camps, made them live in horrible, horrible conditions, and traumatized their children. Yet, do you all remember that? And their grandchildren often? Yeah. Turns out, guys, it wasn't just America that did Japanese internment. It was actually both Canada and the United States. And do you want to know what law they used to allow Japanese internment to happen? I'll give you a second to guess. Was it the War Measures Act? It was the War Measures Act. In fact, the War Measures Act was used three times until it became the Emergencies the Emergencies Act, also known as the Emergency Powers Act, that some people people refer to it differently. It was used three times. The first time was in World War One. Okay, in the first World War, World War it allowed for uh, internment of uh, of of enemies of the state people who were suspected of being German spies, people who were who were suspected of being allied with the German powers. This is in World War I. And then it was used in World War II to create Japanese internment camps, which, by the way, Japanese people would be interned into a concentration camp. No trial. No need to prove that they had any disloyalties. These were citizens and immigrants to Canada. And guess what? There's a more recent one, okay, which is called the October Crisis, okay? Now, this happened in 1970 under a 
a a a a guy some of you might know the name of but most americans aren't going to know the name of trudeau have you ever heard of the name trudeau and you might be thinking well wait a minute trudeau he might have been doing blackface a couple years ago but he's young he couldn't have been in charge of anything in 1970 and you're right because it was his dad pierre trudeau trudeau senior who was in power at that time a little bit a little bit of political dynasty making going on there yeah granddaddy trudeau yeah and um you know hold on oh how strange and uh and uh see pierre trudeau well P pierre trudeau did not like protesters okay um let's just put it that way <laughs> he didn't like protesters in fact uh i have a little funny picture i want to share with you that was uh shared to me by a canadian friend okay uh let me just show you this okay ready we ready thanks keffels by the way thanks keffels this is an artistic rendition of the time that Pierre Trudeau uh, flipped off protesters outside of his train while drinking um, a um, a beer. This is this is like a, a famous painting in Canada of of uh, of, Tr of Pierre Trudeau flipping off protesters while he was prime minister. Yeah, Pierre Trudeau fucking blows. Just so you know, he sucks. And it gets in even more interesting if you decide to actually look into what happened in the October crisis, which I did. See, Canadians, Canadians are used to being able to say any old thing about Canada. All right, Keffels, thank you for this. The a, 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 a British Columbia Museum says that it has preserved the rail car from which Pierre Trudeau gave the middle finger to protesters. In 1982, Trudeau had just finished repatriating the Constitution when he decided to borrow the Governor's General train car for a summertime trip to the Rockies. There's the there's the kit there's the car there's the train car itself where it happened. We renovated the interior by putting in a new carpet, paint, and adding the display items, bedding, and dishes. Oh, how nice. How quaint. Hey, look, there she is replicating it. Him flipping him off. Damn. This is some... Pierre says, we're number one. Mm, oh, boy. This looks... Why does this look racist? Why does this look so racist? I don't know. I don't. I think I don't... I don't think I want to show that anymore. Pierre Trudeau is idolized here? Yeah, because he's a giant neoliberal and he's also a ghoul, okay? Let me explain something, okay? So, uh, I was very frustrated seeing the Canadian response. Um, yes, we're about to talk about that, Keffels. He suspended the Constitution and 600 people were arrested without charges. Yeah, we're about to talk about that. Whew! It's about to get real spicy and very, very, very inconvenient for the Canadians who've been uh, filling my ears with nonsense on uh, on Twitter for the last couple of days. And also, I've seen you all. I've seen you all posting on the Reddits and everywhere else. Your smugness radiating outwards as you, you pretend that Americans don't have the ability to look into your own history. Well, here's the secret. Bitch, I'm not an American. I just happen to be born here. Oh, shit! You thought you were dealing with something else. You thought you were dealing with the Burger King. But no. I'm built different. Okay? And I decided to go find out for myself whether the Canadians were telling the truth. And as it turns out, the Canadian liberals have been lying a lot. They've been lying. And I don't like being lied to. And I'm going to tell you how they've been lying. And why they've been lying. And then I will have defeated liberalism entirely. Okay, so the first thing that pe that the Canadians like to lie about me about was to say, oh, it's the Emergency Act. The Emergency Act isn't the same thing as the War Powers Act. And they're right, but only on a technicality. It is technically not the same thing as the War Powers Act or the War Measures Act. However, it is literally the legislation 
that replaced and reformed the War Measures Act, and it didn't really reform it that much. That's because they abolished it and replaced it immediately with the Emergencies Act. I read about it. Yeah, see? Thank you. Happy to have a couple of based Canadians coming in. Okay? But, uh, but, uh, it gets a little sussier, okay? Because we got to talk about the October crisis and why it is very, very illustrative of what we're talking about here, okay? So, what happened, um, what happened, uh, during the, uh, October crisis? Well, the October crisis was... A, a, a bunch of things that happened in this strange, magical part of Canada called Quebec. Now, for those of you who don't know, I, please don't be shocked. Quebec is French Canada. <gasps> I know, it can be a little scary sometimes, realizing that not everyone spoke, you know, speaks English. This is an Anglo, you know? Um... The uh, yeah, Quebec is a part is a part of a, it's, it's French Canada, okay? And they're very they're very they feel very strongly about their own identity. In fact, there are quite a lot of uh, Quebec nationalists, okay? It's like a, a big thing, okay? Um, it is real. No matter what the what no matter what the critter in the background says, Quebec is a real place, and it can't hurt you most likely, unless you go there and you insult their food, and then they scream at you in bastardized French. Sorry. Um, let's not get distracted here. Um, anyway, let's talk about uh, about the, the October crisis, okay? This happened in October of 1970 under Pierre Trudeau, Daddy Trudeau, not the, not the blackface one, the flipping off protesters one. So not, not the dad, okay? A group called the FLQ, the Front de Libération du Quebec, or something like that, uh, kidnapped a deputy premier named Pierre Laporte, okay? So there was a kidnapping by a part of a, a Quebec liberation, uh, nationalist liberation movement, okay? And um, a lot of shit happened, okay, building up to this. So the this, this group... Um, this group, the, the Front de Liberation du Québec, uh, had for the last, like, seven years been involved in a number of incidents, okay? So there was a lot of things that happened. They were not, they were a infamous group. There was, there was bombings, there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh shootings, there was all kinds of wild shit. It was a, it was a rather large group. And here's the thing. They were only one part of the groups that were protesting at the time that were disagreeing with the Canadian government at the time. They were only one. Okay. Um, there was a, a whole bunch of stuff that happened. Um, and, uh, and, uh, over the course of like a decade, essentially. So from the, from the, or, or, uh, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. About a decade from the early sixties into the seventies, there was a lot of tension. Now I'm not talking about, this isn't like an ISIS group. We're talking about like, uh, um, Let's see, like, I'm looking here for a couple of examples. Uh, they, uh, one of the, one of the bombings was of a, of a stock exchange, which didn't kill anybody, but did a lot of damage and injured some people, and injured 27 people. Okay, a lot of property damage, nobody died, but okay, that's pretty scary. That's, that's, you know, the sort of traditional, uh, uh, propaganda of the act, okay? Um, and, uh, and there was, and then also... Uh, later on, there were some people who were convicted of murder, but it gets a little iffy how tied into the actual politics these things were. Anyway, what ended up happening uh, in October is that tensions were raising, um, and the FLQ broadcasted a a a, uh, a a a manifesto that resulted in a whole bunch of groups going, "This is the moment. This is a revolutionary moment. We are going to." say, fuck this, fuck the Canadian federal government, we've got our own things we want to do, we're going to go out and protest, some of them were protesters, some of them were extremists, some of them were the FLQ, okay? And what ended up happening was fuckloads of troops were sent into Quebec, Quebec, a place that has, for, uh, has clearly, as you can tell, uh, does not 100% uh, see itself as a part of the Canadian federal unit, the Canadian federal state, there's some independence struggles going on there. Um, there's some very strong disagreements. Um, 
and uh, it resulted in the use of the War Measures Act in a historical precedent, okay? Which is, it was used in peacetime. Really strange that. I'm kind of underplaying the injuries of the bombings. Uh, I mean, it 27 people being hurt in a bank bombing in 19... 1960 1969 I'm not trying to downplay that I'm just trying to be for that was 1969 uh bombing of a stock exchange and 27 people were injured but nobody died I'm glad nobody died injuries suck okay so Pierre Trudeau says, we got to deal with these fucking Quebecois nationalists, okay? Now, it gets a little complicated here because, interestingly, some of these people, as you can tell, were leftists. Hmm. And some of these people had a lot of complaints about labor conditions in Quebec at the time. A lot of people, after the manifesto went out, decided that they were going to protest as well. They may not have actually supported the uh, the FLQ, but there was fuckloads of artists who said, hey, we think the standards of life in Quebec are bad. We don't agree with these states' actions. We're going to we're gonna go out and protest. Okay? And here's where it gets really sussy. Uh, Pierre Trudeau says, fuck you, we're sending in the military, and we're declaring the use of the War Measures Act. And after the announcement of using the War Measures Act, they arrested 500 people. 500 people were arrested. And out of curiosity, I wanted to go and look at what, you know, you hear 500 people getting arrested, you know, ah, oh, yes, 500 people, what does that mean? I just want to be clear here. Let me just get the exact quote. Uh, hold on one second. I've got it over here. Let's bring this up. I want to make sure I get the numbers correct. Okay. Here we go. Let me just read this real quick. Um, and for this, by the way, I am uh, for, just so that you're all uh, clear, you'll have my research document later. But just so that you all understand, I am citing a lot of this from a, a piece on the, on the Globe and Mail. Okay. The Globe and Mail published some time ago this was uh in originally published in october 3rd of 2020 this article 50 years later what's the true story of the october crisis this was an article written long before the trucker convoys by simon lucen and if you're worried about if you're worried that this might be some sort of rag i also decided to bring up the uh the media bias fact check page for the globe and mail the globe and mail is uh is rated as a high factual reporting with a right center light a very light right center bias okay uh they have had in the last five years no failed fact checks and they have they have been they have been in business since 1844 so this is not some sort of rag or shitty book shitty uh, newspaper. This is a well-respected newspaper, and this is a well-respected journalist who did his research and has provided a abundance of historical photos and direct citations to original documents that were published at the time. If any of you have any problems with the claims that I make here, I ask you to please take the time to go and check this article for yourself and find out uh, if you have a specific issue with any of the claims, because this is where I'm bringing some of my claims from. So real quick, just so that we're clear, all of this, all of this little pre, this little side amble here was specifically to talk about the arrests. Okay. So let's talk about the arrests. Uh, approximately 500 Canadians were rounded up. And uh, let me see here. It is. Uh, so 497 people were arrested, okay? And there were thousands of raids that were conducted without warrants. So in addition to arresting 500 people, many pe people's houses, workplaces, cars, uh, people's, um, you know, uh, people's private property were raided. Thousands, thousands of warrantless raids. I want you to understand what this would have been like for anybody even in the area 
of where these things were happening. If you even lived in the same town as where some of these protests were occurring, your door gets pounded down if you have a cousin who looked like somebody who, uh, who appeared at one of those protests. No warrant, just the military pounds your door down, maybe arrests you, maybe doesn't. Okay? That's a lot. That's, that's a lot, okay? And here we go. This is the real kicker. Listen close, everybody. Ready? To combat what the government deemed an insurrection, the police conducted thousands of warrantless raids and jailed 497 people. Just 62 ever actually received a, a charge and only 18 of that 62 were ever able to be convicted of a crime. Okay, now I'm going to read you something right from this article. So here's the link if you all want it. I'm going to read a quote from this article that I think is quite poignant. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. Critics argue that surely a crisis could have been handled using normal constitutional means. One expects the government to investigate and prosecute crimes. One does not expect it to suspend civil liberties to do so. In addition to arresting known FLQ operatives, that's the group that was involved in some, you know, you could what you could argue is some form of terrorism, blowing up buildings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In, in addition to arresting the FLQ, some known FLQ operatives, the police rounded up poets, musicians, journalists, academics, students, left-wing advo advo activists under uh, McCarthyite pretexts that anyone who had once even had or shown FL FLQ sympathies or had spent any time with anyone who did was a potential collaborator. They arrested a teenager whose only offense was that his parents were politically outspoken. A teenager was arrested because his parents were political. Let's continue. Due process was put on hold. For the first week behind bars, detainees were not allowed to consult lawyers, seek bail, request information as to why they'd been confined, or challenge their confinement in any court. Many were denied contact with the outside world or and, and to their loved ones. It was simply as if they had disappeared. Hear that? The average detainee spent seven days combined. So the average out of 500 people, only 18 of whom were ever convicted of any crimes, and only 66 of whom ever even had charges brought against them, the average person was in jail for seven days. By the way, some of you are artists. Some of you have tweeted on Twitter or on Facebook or, or, or posted on Facebook that you support BLM, that you support Antifa. What if you had to spend seven days in fucking jail with no access to a lawyer, with none of your loved ones there? Maybe you, and you, maybe you don't have your medication. Maybe you don't got any fucking clothes. You want to sit in fucking jail just for being an artist who said support? A little fucked up, isn't it? I just want you to think about that. That's seven days. That's if you're lucky. That was the average across 500 people. A lot of those people spent way longer in jail and were not allowed to tell anybody that they were in jail because they'd been functionally disappeared. You'd lose your job if you had a nine to five. Your family members might be really mad at you. You might miss uh, uh, all kinds of important things. You might you might have other uh, other fucking legal responsibilities. It's pretty fucked. Not done though. The average detainee spent seven days confined, but others were jailed for more than three months. And according to sociologist Christopher Hewitt, some reported being physically abused or beaten during their arrests and interrogations. The War Measures Act did not explicitly give police the right to abuse prisoners, but it did hugely increase the discretionary powers at the hands of police. Abuse was an obvious, predictable outcome. Perhaps the most lasting outcome of the War Measures Act, though, was the peacetime norms it helped to establish. Previously, Prime Ministers Robert Borden and Mackenzie King had authorized brutal internment campaigns during the First and Second World Wars. But by invoking the War Measures Act in 1970, Mr. Trudeau, Pierre Trudeau, asserted that even in an era of peace, prosperity, and rising liberalism, mass arrests were still acceptable. Hmm. So that changes things just a little bit, doesn't it? That, that makes you think a little bit, doesn't it? 
And a lot of these people arrested, by the way, were leftists. Because a lot of those people who went out to protest at that time were labor organizers fighting against reforms in the 70s, in the 1970s, neoliberal reforms. Kind of scary, isn't it? Kind of weird how when you get rid of due process, anybody could be put on that list. Anybody who has uh, suspicions, whether it's, and, and keep in mind, it, it gets fractally fucked up because it's not just uh it's not just a matter of like what if you're a personal enemy of Pierre Trudeau what if you're a personal enemy of a local cop and that cop says eh i fucking hate you i'm going to say i saw you at the protest they don't have to prove it there's no due process they can just say i fucking hate my neighbor ned flanders what a piece of shit i saw you know what i'm just going to i'm just going to i'm going to write down to my supervisor that he was spotted at an flq po protest Boom, Ned Flanders fucking gone. Fucking black bag Ned Flanders. Oh, uh, oh, 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 diddly doodly. This is a little concerning, neighborino. Boonk. Oakley doakley then. Now you might go, wow, well, that's a lot more violent than what's happening here. Is it? Let me ask you something. Le liberals lefties we all agree that even if you're not even if you're not a lefty you can agree that you know capitalism kind of sucks in its current state right At, you need nobody's got savings everybody you need money to live you need money to pay for a rental more people are renting than ever before nobody owns a house so you got to pay for rent you got to pay a lot for food you got to pay for your car you pay for gas so we know that money is life in capitalism that, that you you can't really do anything if you can't get access to money but it gets a little worse because freezing assets isn't just turning off your bank your 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 bank card so you can't go to the atm freezing your assets is retirements uh 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 beneficiaries insurance policies investments your child's um a college fund your uh your your child's student loans that you're the signatory on your house loan this is what freezing your equity your, yeah your equity on your home your social security and guess what they don't have to send a cop to go do that they just turn on the war measures act or sorry <clears throat> the emergency measures act and all of a sudden you're maybe you're the kid of some maybe how many of you have maga asshole families how would it feel if your maga asshole family because technically your maga asshole dad is the main is like the main uh uh, uh signatory on your student loans you get kicked out of school yeah i'm noticing in chat there's a lot of quiet from the canadian faction now it's interesting a lot of these insufferable Canadian liberals on Twitter have been talking out their ass for days, expecting that the Americans aren't ha aren't well read or informed on the issues. But guess what? The first demon type streamer is always informed. So let's let's kind of like take a breath and step back for a second. The trucker convoy is shit. Nobody can doubt that. It is shit. It's bad. But guess what? What's being justified against them is incredibly, incredibly fucked, and it's fucked beyond just them. It would be fucked if it was only hitting them, but we know it won't. We know it doesn't, okay? We know it doesn't. The act also lets you restrict access to banking and payment processing. Yes! The war... The, sorry, the Emergency Powers Act, the Emergencies Act, allows them, allows the Canadian government to reach into your private holdings. Again, this is shit that fucks over an entire family, not just one person. So maybe your, maybe your dad is, a, is an aggressive piece of shit, but your mom's really hardworking and loving, but your dad, you know, has the, the mortgage in his name. Suddenly, you're fucking out on the street. You and your mom are out on your street because your dad went and fucking got drunk at what he thought was a tailgating 
party, but instead was a bunch of MAGA idiots blocking a road. And, 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 and it gets even worse, okay? Because when we start to look into the justifications of why this is being used, um, uh, 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 why this is being used, it gets even sussier. I know it's, 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 uh, it's a little shocking that it can get even more sussy than it's already been. Almost like everybody who's been saying this is the sussiest shit in the world is dead fucking correct. Fucking dead on fucking 360 no scope correct. So let's look at the justifications for, uh, why the, the the emergencies act is necessary here now a lot of you have probably heard of uh of a place uh called the ambassador bridge has anybody heard of the ambassador bridge here i'm going to show you the ambassador bridge for a second okay everybody ready map wait it didn't work map here you go map yes i have a forked tongue just for those who are new and don't know. There you go. Anyway, um, so here you go. Uh, this is the Ambassador Bridge. Now, I've been paying attention to a lot of Canadians arguing about this on Twitter. And the Canadian government, their main argument for why they needed to enact the Emergency Measures Act, formerly known as the War Powers Act, is because of this bridge right here. So, if you zoom out, here's Detroit, Michigan. See? Here's America. There's Detroit, Michigan. There's Toronto all the way over there, which is a city. And here is this bridge. Now, you can probably tell, damn, that's kind of an important bridge, isn't it? Sure would suck if people parked their cars all over it and the main highway between the United States and, uh, and uh, fucking Ontario was blocked. That would probably cost a lot of money for a lot of people. Now, the Canadian government was like, guys, guys, that's the Ambassador Bridge. 25% of all of our trade into the, the, into the city of Toronto, the greater Toronto area, comes from that. Blocking this is terroristic violence against the economy. And you might go, wow, 25%? 25%? That's my life you're talking about. That's my that's my economy you're talking about. 25%? I mean, let's leave out the fact that there's that means 75% does not go across this bridge, right? That's the that's the, the that's the part they're not saying. Is that okay, so well, that's 25%. Well, that means 75% goes elsewhere. So won't they just kind of like won't they go elsewhere and it will most it will cost money, but like no one's gonna die from that. Like, it's just, you just gotta take another bridge or wait a long time. But let's not pretend, okay? Let's, the 25%, everybody. And all the Canadians have been saying this over and over and over again. Oh my God, they're blocking the Ambassador Bridge. Guess what, everybody? I got a bit of a fact check for you. Are you fucking ready? Are you fucking, are you fucking ready? Fact check moment, demon mama receipt moment. Whoops! Ambassador Bridge reopens after disruption from protests. Huh, that's a little weird. I wonder what the date on that was. Wait a second, this was published on the 13th. The 13th was fucking three days ago. And the bridge reopened on Saturday. So if they already reopened the bridge, then why the hell do you need the Emergency Powers Act to save the economy? And all the Canadians lied, by the way. All the fucking Canadians who were going on every single fucking stream and being like, Oh, but they're blocking 25% of the economy in the, in the province of Ontario across this single bridge. We're fucking lying to you. Doing typical stupid ass liberal things. And liberals in my audience, of which I know there are many, listen the fuck up. Because you doing little Weasley dishonesties like this is a disservice to yourself. To yourself. You're hurting yourself 
by being such an insufferable, smug, lying, idiot, boot-licking liberal. It's so fucking annoying. But also, it's horrible. <sighs> or in turn, they were lied to and were repeating it. Same fucking thing. Same fucking thing when it comes to this shit. If you just fucking blindly repeat the, the propaganda of the state, you're a fucking idiot. I don't care who you are. That's fucking stupid. All right? That's all I got to say, okay? Now, I know, I know. You, you're all sitting there. You're going, Demon Mama, it can't get sus here. I can't handle any more Amogus. There are Amoguses coming out of my ears at this point. I'm so sussed. But guess what? It gets even sussier, okay? And this one is really, honestly, quite frankly, this is the real fucking dunk. This is the dunk of dunks that you all have been waiting for, okay? And this is where we get to be so fucking insufferable back to the Canadians who've been so fucking annoying all over Twitter for the last three days. This is our moment, everybody. So get ready to... Oh, get ready to taste the delicious, delicious fucking own. Watch, okay? This is from... Uh, this was posted this morning. I believe this was from yesterday. This is... This is, everybody knows, Mr. Blackface himself, Justin Trudeau, all right? Let's take a listen in. Let's hear what Justin Trudeau has to say about the use of the Emergency Powers Act. Ready? Ah, here we go. Plush, plush unicycle. I'm not a liberal demon mama, but the War Measures Act isn't the same as the War Measures Act. Whoops, a little bit of a Freudian slip there. <laughs> Whoopsies! Little bit of a fucking Freudian slip there, my friend. Yes, it is. Yes. They are the 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 Emergency Powers Act is a direct replacement and reform of the War Measures Act. And the main criticism is that it doesn't go far enough in reforming away the war powers. Okay. Here we go, everybody. Let's listen to Justin Trudeau in his own words. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen- Hold on, we gotta boost up this audio because he's so fucking, he's such a soft-spoken, nice boy Canadian who does blackface on the weekends. Let's see. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen- Why is this audio so goddamn low? Jesus fucking Christ. Can we crank you up, you soft-spoken fuck? The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. Ooh, damn. Let's let's wind that back again. The Emergencies Act, this is this is verbatim. The Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all levels across the country. This is about keeping Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs, and restoring confidence in our institutions. I literally, I don't think you can get more literal. It's just, it's just, I mean, guys, it's just literally. Oh my God, he admitted it. He fucking admitted it! He fucking admitted it! Right there! He just fucking came right out with it! Straight up! He fucking admitted it! He just said, We are going we are in, in doing this to keep you safe and restore your faith in the institutions. Don't worry. There is nothing to be concerned about. Ignore the man getting his head caved in by a baton outside your window. Ignore the friends who went missing. They were traitors. And remember, all these fucking idiot liberal Canadians who've been all over Twitter lately have been saying, the cops just weren't doing their job. This is the cops' fault. It's those dirty MAGA cops. It's those those right-wing cops. And yet, turns out, they're going to use the war met, or the, uh, sorry, oh God, I keep getting the mix mixed up. The Emergency Powers Act, they're going to use the Emergency Powers Act to empower the guys who supposedly caused the problem?
Now, it's funny. I saved, I could have just started this entire segment by playing you this clip of Justin Trudeau just self-reporting to every single person on the planet. I could have, that could have been the whole segment. But see, because I'm gracious and cool, and also informed about the things that I talk about, I instead walked you through my entire reasoning as to why the using the War Measures Act is literally a massive authoritarian power overstep. Thirty percent of all trade between U.S. and Canada. Okay, two things to say to that. One. It wouldn't matter what the number was. If there were eight bridges, they would have said, that was only one of our, th that was, they blocked three of our eight, three out of eight. And then liberals would have gone three. That's a lot of bridges. And it wouldn't have mattered what it is. You could make up any number. They could have said 10% and the liberals would have gone 10% and they don't even know what it means. They never ask. They just go, oh, the state says it's bad. We better be, oh, let's go with it. Fuck the MAGA people, right? And, oh, and also fuck every single other protester that has ever existed. And you want to know something really f offensive and stupid that a lot of fucking dumbass, liberal, moron Canadians came and said to me? They were like, Wah! what the fuck is wrong with leftists? You Did you see how the Canadian government treated those, the, the, the Wet'suwet'en people and the, the land defenders? And you're going to cry over these poor conservatives? And I go, you stupid fucking idiot. This means they'll treat them worse in the future. And it's infuriating to me. And offensive. Offensive. And it should be, it should be considered the, the insult to all of your intelligence that it actually is. Because that's what it is. It is a bunch of dupes, a bunch of bootlicking, state-loving, moron liberals. And this is where we get to the real crux of all of this. And the reason why I decided to make a segment out of it. Because this issue touches on one of the critical flaws of liberalism. Okay? The critical. As in the, 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 the kill shot. The Achilles heel. Okay? The Achilles heel of liberalism is that... They're social fascists, okay? And people have heard this term bouncing around and usually roll their eyes at it. But what it actually means, if you think about it, they are people who, when the, when the moral panic strikes correctly, they are totally willing to jump on board with fascistic laws so long as it restores order, which is a, a magical, completely nebulous term that nobody ever knows what it means. Just restore order. Restore order could mean... A bridge that isn't blocked anymore desperately needs to be cleared, which is why you need to be able to suspend due process, right, everybody? For that bridge that got cleared out five days before the declaration, or three days before the declaration was even being discussed. Or, uh, 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 or order could be, oh, remember what Trump, do you guys remember what Trump said about the BLM protests? Do you guys remember that? Remember that? You guys, <laughs> you guys remember that shit? <laughs> oh, good times. Good times, everybody. You remember what he said about Antifa? Do you remember what he said about BLM? Yeah. Damn. Looks like it doesn't take much to, to say, to say without any evidence that somebody's bad, especially if they're a political enemy. And if you have the power to suspend their, their entire, their civil liberties, their most basic civil liberties, that's a bad power to have. A really really bad power to have in the hands of the state now now there's another aspect of this which is that some liberals will go yeah so what you think we should just send in tanks you think we should just send the police in wow you must, you really care about people that you think that money is worth more than lives. And of course, this is an idiotic position because it has nothing to do, uh, it, it literally doesn't address anything that's being discussed. Um, yes, it would be better for the, the state to have to do what it has to do by the Constitution 
than for them to just suspend that whenever they feel inconvenienced by it. As it turns out, there is a thing called due process. If there is a protest that is getting out of hand, according to the, the principles of liberal democracy, they are supposed to declare it a riot, then those people are to be cleared out. If there are people who are found to be, uh, like, as in physically moved, please get out of this area. Other people might need to use this area. Don't agree with all of this, but let's keep within that liberal hat for just a second. They're supposed to go in there, make arrests, levy charges. Those people get a lawyer. They get to have a court case. They get to see if they were innocent. Because what if it's just your drunk brother who rode in your truck with you and you got caught up and got into this little convoy and then you were stuck and couldn't leave? Do you deserve to go to prison right next to a terror, like a, a, a shooter, a bomber or something like that or some Nazi? No, of course not. So, yes, yes, they should send in the police. The, the state should have to do its job. And bring charges against people, even if it's inconvenient, because that's how you guarantee, ostensibly, according to liberals, a fair society. But like I said, if we can remember the social fascist thing, whenever liberals get offended, usually over the economy, all of a sudden, it's free game. They don't want you to have those nice benefits of a liberal democracy. All of a sudden, they want an autocrat who can fucking locker you. And stuff your head in the uh, stuff your head in the toilet and give you a swirly. What happens when the police won't do that? Well, guess what? You have what? The military. Then do that. You fire cops who don't do their job. Or that, you fire the cops and hire new cops. That's literally what you do in every other case. Yeah, it, like you fire the cops. You f exactly you fire the fucking cops thank you that was actually the perfect thing because i was thinking too fucking big you can't just send the military into a metro area yes you can okay people please please get out of please Does canada not have a national guard no, hold on hold on i know hold on these, Doe, you need to be careful. These people are video gamers. They only think about things like, like, oh, the military, that's when I have a tank unit in Civilization VI and I move it three hexes to the left. <laughs> that's their that's their brain. That's the, that is the liberal mind prison is truly being stuck in Civilization fucking VI brain. Guys, the military has police that are like less armed than the normal police and better at their jobs. I don't know if you know this. They're called MPs. Now, listen, that's not to say they're better. They're just better at their jobs because they have actual things on the line to lose, unlike cops who are just basically in a gang. Okay? Yeah, I fuck you. I played Call of Duty. I know everything about the military. You can't, The military people only drive tanks. They don't have any other vehicles. If you want, if if you're in the military, if you if have you been in the military, are you a veteran? Don't you know every single veteran just drives around an M1 Abrams tank, tearing up the fucking tar from here to the grocery store because that's how it works. If you are a soldier, you can only drive a tank. You forget how to drive every other vehicle. Every single bullet is a micro nuke. Yes, they have literal, the military has t towing vehicles that can literally pick up a car and put it on a flatbed. They don't even need to actually use the wheels of the car. They have these, these things that pick up cars and put them on flatbeds. <sighs> Do you see why this is so frustrating to me? You see why I made this into a segment? Because I think this subject really, really brings up one of the, like I, like I said, the Achilles heel of liberalism, which is that liberals will literally reenact fascist laws in order to have their precious economic order. It's the critical flaw of liberalism is that everything is second to capitalism. The economy has to go because if the economy isn't happening, well, then how are you going to have your Funko Pops and your, your freedom to choose between Pepsi and Coke? How are you going to have your freedom to not be inconvenienced? How are you going to have your freedom to not pay an extra dollar for fucking oil for your, or gas for your car? That's how libs think. And that's why they get called social fascists. 
They get called social fascists because while on the surface, they don't necessarily support fascist economic policies like heavy nationalization, but when it comes to social issues, a push too far and all of a sudden they're okay with black bagging anybody they don't like. And the average lib doesn't even do this like knowingly. They're just, they're just uninformed dupes that bootlick. And Canadians are the worst about this, by the way. And this is the funny thing, again. Uh, Canadians are so used to being able to make fun of America's insanity that when, when it's their turn, they, they don't know how to take it on the chin. They don't know how to fucking deal with it and just go, yeah, actually, our country sucks ass. Thanks, America. I said, like, I made a joke. Here, I'll show you my tweet here. I made a joke the other day that people got really fucking pissed at, by the way. But I'm going to show you the joke, okay? Hold on. Let me get it real quick. Let me just let me just let me just get the let me just get the joke here. I don't want to offend anyone, but I want to make sure we report this correctly. Which was this, okay? Right here. There you go. I hate to say this, but the one thing Americans do have a lived experience of is living in a police state and experiencing the state of exception. It's an American pastime to issue emergency powers that never disappear and just become normal things to fear. And then I followed up by saying, Americans looking at Canada about to pass emergency powers that deeply compromise civil rights. And these memes, by the way, a lot of people got mad at these memes, okay? I'm just telling you, the Canadians fucking mauling at these really, really light memes. Guys, America had to live through fucking 9-11. A lot of us were like kids watching, every, like, like, I flew before and after 9-11, before flying an airplane, like on an airplane before 9-11, was a relatively leisurely experience. You went in, you walked through a single fucking metal detector, you took your bags on board, they had one guy have a dog smell it so there's like no bombs or anything, and that's it. And then you go on your flight, and your relatives could look out the windows with you, and you could watch the planes coming in. There was like, you could take food in and out, you could bring food onto the plane, you could pack yourself a fucking lunch. That's like incomprehensible to you fucking Zoomers that you could like take food and drink onto an airplane. You could just pack yourself a lunch for your flight. Yeah, yeah, gay fish. I remember being able to greet friends at the gate. It's long gone. American, America. Oh. 90 sitcoms. Yeah, well, go watch a 90 sitcom and you'll see what we're talking about. It's like fucking a different world. Literally, also, if you've ever crossed the border, um, if you've ever crossed the border into Canada, it's super militarized on the American side of things, and it's super fucking chill on most of the Can Canadian side of things. And the reason for that is because America became a police state after 9-11, and now Canada's trying to fucking copy us, which is, a, which is horrible. Literally, us fucking American leftists who you smug-ass Canadian libs are turning your nose up are trying to warn you, you idiots. You fucking clowns. Wake up! Wake up, sheeple! The convoy was torturing people. Like, they functionally occupied Ottawa. Emergency powers are bullshit, but I think the people defending them are, are thinking about the torture of citizens and not recognizing what prompted them. Um, this is the other thing that we haven't even talked about yet, okay? Ready? This is, the, this, is the, this is the part where I think the last defenses of liberalism will be blown to shreds, Okay? Here's what we go. How do you determine what an emergency is? Okay? And keep in mind that in this case, the the determination of an emergency is almost entirely justified on economic damage. Do you want to know what else causes economic damage? A You thought I was going to say general strike. But I'm not a strike, a protest, um, a sit-in, uh, a march. All of these things cause economic damage. In fact, and in fact, they can cause a lot of economic damage. And in fact, the fact that they cause economic damage is the reason why they're useful. Do you understand that? A strike is useful because... It is workers withholding the thing that they have. And you know what's really, really, really strange? And this is where it's going to... I want you to strain your little liberal brains. Let's get some wrinkles on there, okay? 
We live in the age of the gig economy. Unions have essentially no power anymore. Lots of people don't ever see or know or even really have coworkers. You have no collective bargaining. How do you make a name for yourself when you have no power? Do you want to know how you could do that? Well, let's say that you and a bunch of other gig workers who've never met each other, but perhaps know each other as friends or through an online group, you go and decide to block a highway as protest, to block a street as protest, to blockade something, an ICE facility maybe, as protest. That is the only power that most people even have any semblance of reach. And yes, let's 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 not forget that Justin Trudeau. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, later, uh, that Justin Trudeau passed a bill that would force postal workers to go back to work when they were striking. Force you to go to work on threat of state punishment. You have to go to work. Yeah. So. There are so many levels of wrongness on this topic. And again, this is why I said it's the Achilles heel, okay? It's the fucking Achilles heel of liberalism. And it, it, it seems like such a small issue. Truck convoy, protests, but it's the Achilles heel of liberalism.